Welcome to another Parent Teacher Video Lesson from the EarlyGiftedManual.com, a free website for homeschooled children three to seven years old and their parents that promotes and develops giftedness at an early age. I am Gary Blank, the creator of that site and your host and facilitator for this video and all of the videos in my educational program. As the video lessons are designed to work in conjunction with the program on my website, I ask you to, at some point, click on the URL link in the description box below, and this action will take you to the earlygiftedmanual.com. By doing that, you will be able to put this lesson and all of the video lessons here on my channel in the proper context of the total program that I am presenting to you and your child. And now let's look at pentominoes and the uh, so-called pentomino puzzle. And uh, what exactly is a pentomino? Well, um, the pent tells you that, uh, that, that there's five of something. So uh, they are five uh, what we call congruent squares, meaning they're exactly the same, they're equal, and they're connected along the edges and they come in 12 different configurations, and I have all 12 out in front of me here. This could be called a, a domino set, or not a, a domino set, a pentomino set, although I have a much bigger set than this, you'll see shortly. Uh, but this is the minimum uh, pieces you would need for a, a set of pentominoes. So 12 different configurations, and if you can see, there are little lines that show you the, the squares, to kind of delineate the squares. Let's see if this helps at all. Hopefully you can see them. And you can use them either way, this way or their reflection, because the lines are on both sides, and that's, that's very important. And now I have my entire uh, set of pentominoes out, and I, um, I believe I have six colors there, and there are 12 of each color, uh, so, you know, a, a set in each color, and I think uh, um, six 12s, I think that's 72 total. I've never counted them, but I assume that's what's in there. And you can do what I'm about to do with just one color. That's okay, but uh, if you have the whole set, that's even better. And this is what I merely call freeform pentominoes, and this is a great, great way to start with, with your child uh, using pentominoes instead of uh, trying to, you know, fit them into some particular program right away. Why not just let them experiment with the pentominoes by putting them together like I'm doing right here in different configurations. As you can see, uh, um, Every child has a different uh, approach to this, but you know, for the most part, uh, what what they're trying to do is is they're trying to uh, um, fill up the space, uh, you know, as much as they can and work out from sides. But you never know. I mean, you know, uh, like I said, every kid has their own approach to this. But you should uh, just disappear for a while. Um, allow them to play around with uh, these pentominoes any way they wish to play around with them. As you can see, I'm just kind of doing a, a random kind of thing here. And uh, let's see, and yeah, I could go on and on and on, but uh, you see what I'm getting at. Uh, Freeform, before we get into the puzzle at all, uh, give your child ample time to just uh, mess around, as I like to say, with, uh, with the pentominoes. So if your child is very advanced in some of the things we've been doing here with these manipulatives and has just excellent spatial intelligence and design intelligence, um, here would be a, a good place to go with the pentominoes. As, you've see, as you see, I've gone back to just one color, the 12 uh, 
um, pentamino set. They're all 12 different shaped pieces. And look what I've done here. Uh, using a map, I, because I'm uh, instructing this to you. Um, this is what's called the pentamino puzzle. And the pentamino puzzle is to tile a rectangular box with the pentaminos. So in other words, you cover, cover that rectangular box without any overlap or any gaps. And uh, needless to say, this is not an easy puzzle. So, um, you know, if you feel your child can, can tackle it, great. But if you see frustration, well, um, just tell him or her to, to either keep trying, let it go uh, over a long time, or they will decide if they, if they don't want to uh, work on, on doing this pentamino puzzle anymore. But here's what it looks like all finished. And of course, I've, I've relied on my trusty framing square to square it up. So let me pull that away. Makes things a lot easier. And like I said, all of those 12 pieces that I showed you uh, a little a little while ago are all in here in a rectangle. This is a 6 by 10 rectangle and there are other answers to the, the puzzle. You could also make a 5 by 12 rectangle, 4 by 15, and finally uh, 3 by 20. And even beyond those four, there are some specialty puzzles. For example, there's an 8x8 eight eight rectangle with a 2x2 two two hole in the center. And of course, you can go online and find out all of these goodies. Uh, so um, this is the pentamino puzzle. And, uh, you know, I have to tell you once again, um, these, this is for, uh, first of all, a child with a lot of patience, a lot of... Uh, uh, smarts when it comes to uh, s spatial things and uh, putting puzzles together. This could be a great challenge for them and uh, they could make all four of the, the puzzles that I mentioned and, and even maybe uh, a, a few more. And uh, like I said, uh, if you go to the Early Gifted Manual, uh, there will be a link there to a website that will show you the solutions. That's how I was able to, to put this one together efficiently and quickly so I could show you. So a great challenge for, for uh, the highly spatially advanced child, the pentamino puzzle. And just to prove, prove that the, all 12 pieces are here, I'm going to take it apart for you. And there you go. There you go. And here's a construction that I put together, uh, just to give you an example of what might be possible, a possible thing that your child could take on. And as you can see, I've now combined uh, the three manipulatives of color cubes, color tiles, and pentominoes. And as you can see, the results are quite uh, interesting. And um, some of you may be looking at this construction. I'm going to pan around a little bit here so you can see what it looks like. Try to get down low, even lower. And like I was about to say, some of you might be thinking, well, uh, my child could never do anything like that. Uh, but you may be surprised. Obviously, this is a very challenging activity uh, that requires excellent uh, fine motor control and, um, and a, a few other understandings, but especially uh, very fine motor control on the part of your child. But um, one thing you can do is just uh, put all these, these three manipulatives out and just see what happens. Perhaps your, your child might be ready for something like this and you could make an example like this for him or her, or a simpler one, um, and just see what they can do. It, it's certainly worth a try, but uh, challenging activity. And uh, some of the some of the things that uh, uh, skills that go into this are well. First of all, it's a modular construction because everything is based on a on a square inch. The pentominoes, the color tiles, 
as well as the color cube. So everything is based on a square inch. So that's one thing uh, um, that's important. And, and we call that modular construction. Uh, it, it makes it easier for, for uh, builders and, and for th makes it easier for things to fit together. And as you can see, uh, if you look closely here, you can see some examples of what I'm talking about. Um, there's an equivalency of uh, five stacked color cubes is approximately the same, or five stacked color tiles is, is approximately the same as uh, um, uh, one color cube in height. So that's kind of an, an important thing uh, to know. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of uh, balance that goes on in this uh, construction, particularly what they call cantilever construction, where um, platforms are going out from, from uh, um, a more central, stable structure, and sometimes they have to be balanced. So it's also you know, a great exercise uh, for your child in uh, um, b being able to balance things and keep things from toppling over, like any blocks, I suppose, but this one even ups the ante a little bit because you have these flat pentominoes in, in strange shapes, or in, in strange configurations, I should say. So you've got that element happening, balance and cantilever instruction. Uh, construction, excuse me. So there's a lot that could be gained from uh, from your child working with these three um, uh, math manipulatives together just to see what he or she might be able to do with them. And like I said, this is very advanced, so if your child just can't come up with something like this, don't, don't feel bad. Just let uh, him or her uh, utilize these uh, three manipulatives together any way they want to, in, in any way that, that makes sense to them.